So hello everyone. Uh, let's start. And today uh, I'm going to discuss about exercise programming. It will be actually a lecture series, but uh, because I wanted to let others know that what will be covered and uh, what the main theme of the series would be and i wanted to connect with more people i'm just making my intentions clear and i i just want to uh, just discuss a few things uh, that are not discussed in the common uh, like sphere and uh, this these are really simple stuff it is not that very super complicated or something like that but uh, because these are important stuff especially if we talk about especially if we talk about exercise selection and uh, so people are still joining yeah so let's start and we have almost uh, 15 plus people gathered here so let's start so i i have actually done a poll in the group and uh, most okay someone is not being able to join let me Okay, so let's start. So I have uh, done a poll in the. I have done a poll in the group, and uh, most of you were coaches, and some of you are just wanted to know, uh, wanted to join because you want to more about exercise programming. So I will be discussing a, a common idea today. And I'll be taking the different nuances which are oftentimes more ignored. Okay, so we are going to discuss exercise programming. Basically, it is how we can determine the exercises for ourselves and for the guys or the people we train. So people are still joining actually. Okay, so Okay, 19 people are here and I'm really excited about this thing. So we are basically discussing exercise programming. What factors we should actually take into account if we just need to select exercises for ourselves and for our the guys or the girls whom we are training. But the thing is, then people may ask like, it is really simple, right? You can just do bench presses for chest dumbbell presses for chest then you can do tricep extension for triceps everything is like already covered in the main mainstream uh, like the fitness media but there are more nuances those are often overlooked and you may ask why why just choose uh, something like exercise why just choose between different exercises so before that i am someone and because most of you are from my instagram so i am not uh i'm i'm not i'm just not making it like more about myself and i, I just coach people for hypertrophy and powerlifting related goals and i also train myself i in, in terms of lifting i am a self coach guy where uh, the lifting is uh, I have done the lifting for the past decade and I have gone into the nuances I I have some theoretical knowledge yes but I am into more into the practical applications of the site and I have trained in various settings I have trained in calisthenics I am not a good calisthenics guy but in some situations put me uh, in a position where I have to I uh, use body weight stuff. I had to use gymnastic ring stuff. I had to use uh, only barbell, only dumbbell. 
I have trained in every setting, but today because the session is is of a limited time, I am going to assume a few things. Uh, we are talking about a basic gym setting. Like we are almost everyone here is from India, so we are going to assume that our gym is like basic gym setup where. Barbells are there, dumbbells are there. There are some uh, opportunities for us to train the push-ups, pull-ups, and some machines. And those machines are not too advanced, but they does the job done. So let's move on to the main topic here: exercise selection. And we can you can ask me like how important or why it is important. Okay, so when a lot of debate has been going on in the Online sphere, maybe in the Instagram, maybe in the YouTube, people are talking about like this exercise. You should always do this exercise. This uh, or, or somebody is there who just talks about like you should not be uh, doing this exercise. Uh, ye exercise karna ban kar do, wo exercise karna ban kar do. So how important it is. So I see exercise selection. You can have different point of views. The different point of views. From the point of view of yourself, like if you are training yourself or you are going to the gym by yourself, then the exercise selection matters uh, a differently than when you are a coach or you are you are coaching people. Okay, so why this is why these two are so different? Let me give you some nuances about that. When you talk about yourself, the exercise selection, the most important ex- stuff about exercise selection is that. You have to have fun, okay. If you don't find that thing exciting or fun, or if you find it too boring, then you are not going to stick to it, or you are not. You see, majority of the people, like except for the hyper competitive guys who are just having one distinct goal in their mind, like I have to be ready, I have to develop this muscle for this day on this platform. Unless it is you, most of the people. Most of the people, if you are just going to the gym just to have some a good time or just have some uh, just have some uh, a good workout or you just want to train, you love to train, then the most important aspect is the fun stuff. Like you have to be enjoying what you are doing. You have to be enjoying what you are doing. So if you want to enjoy what you are doing, then this has to be one of the most important factor okay you have to be believing in the exercises by yourself then you are going to do it but when you approach at, at the exercise as a coach or we can we can add another layer here as a competitive athlete or as a competitive guy or you have a you are you you are just trying to make everything like you have a very precise goal like see there are two two person one person is going to the gym let's say this is person a he is going to the gym and he is, he just want to get stronger maybe for him exercise selection the nuances of it it doesn't matter that much because he is just they are just to work out and most of the people they don't even work out but there are a group of people who are just working out but they have distinct goal like they want to be a coach they want to experiment or they just want to know about the different type of exercise for them exercise selection matters the most but today the the thing we are going to discuss is about precision is about precision okay so what what do i mean by precision precision means see if you are a bodybuilder let's say i i have also done a poll where i asked like if you are from bodybuilding background or powerlifting background most of you were from the bodybuilding background or you you just want to train for hypertrophy you want you, you just want to build muscle okay so if your goal is bodybuilding or and if you are a coach then majority of the people will have some kind of bodybuilding related goals i am not telling that bodybuilding is not like competitive bodybuilding but they want to physique related goals they want to look good okay for them precision matters precision means if a there is an exercise x and it targets the muscle group a then this exercise x must do must do some job well number 1 it should stimulate this particular group of muscle 
if you are doing it for death and at the same time it should eliminate the other muscles other muscles from interfering or it should create less fatigue okay it should target that muscle so if you want to if you want to build the chest then you should do the exercises that targets the chest you should not be worry about you should not be worrying about uh, picking an exercise which just takes the other parts of the uh, muscle as well so what i am talking about here let me give you two example like if your if your goal if your precise goal is to train the chest and you have two option one option you have uh, let's say hammer chest press machine or the chest press machine or chest fly and there is another exercise where you have to lie on the floor hip thrust the bar up and get it to a floor press position then you are going to floor press it so which exercise you are going to select if your precise goal is to target the chest you are going to you are uh, just you, you can just use the chat box to write like which which uh, which exercise you are going to choose you are going to choose the hammer chest press right if it if it targets the muscle well and it doesn't tax like the limiting factor is just chest if you if you cannot produce the force from the chest then you you are just you are just not going to use use that stuff okay so today uh, because we are talking about chest let let's talk uh, let's talk about the bench press so how many of you loves the exercise bench press you can just write it in the chat box okay okay so most of you like the exercise bench press okay uh, okay you love but you couldn't progress okay we are going to give you some pointers for the progression as well here so let's talk about the bench press today let's talk about the bench press okay here is the goat arnold he is doing the bench press and he is quite famous for it i have searched the internet but i have not found one single photo of arnold doing dumbbell presses for the chest he is always doing this bench presses so this is why i have used his photo here okay so you do the bench press for the chest right so we are going to discuss about the bench press today so how much nuances you can have and if you are a coach then why or why shouldn't you use the exercise bench press so we are going deep into it and again disclaimer i am not going to bore you with scientific jargon i am not going to give you anything really super complicated or something so let's take an example of the bench press and we are okay you do uh, incline bench press yeah that is that is also fine this is also fine but uh, let's talk about bench press because if you go to any gym across the world uh, if it is monday the bench the flat bench people are going to start with the flat bench i am just making a really anecdotal like a really uh, like i observed this thing so i am using this but now people are now realizing the efficacy of other exercises and they are choosing different kind of exercises so let's talk about the flat bench press today we are going to discuss about the flat bench press or you can you can take any bench press uh, where we are using the barbell okay yes the mon monday means uh, chest day yeah it is the international chest day okay so tomorrow it is it is the most popular exercise okay bench press it has to be the most popular exercise uh, ex uh, except from the curls basically because or overhead press because most people if you give them a bar the first thing they they will perform a curl and they will try to do it overhead like this is some basic in instinct of the human beings to perform these two exercises with the uh, barbell so uh, please from you guys i want to know like uh, which muscle group does it work which muscle group does it work i am talking about barbell bench press and one more constraint i am adding i am adding that is flat barbell bench press okay flat bench and barbell done uh, bench press done with the barbell so uh, which muscle group uh, does it work uh, 
yeah uh, most of you are going to right chest okay most of you are going to uh, chest yes and some triceps and shoulders as well from triceps and shoulders as well so this is a correct answer this is a correct answer okay so if you are a coach if somebody comes to you like i my chest is lagging and i want to build a uh, my chest musculature would you recommend the exercise like you should do barbell bench press or you should not do barbell bench press so there are layers basically so first you have to realize that what are the uh, available equipment so uh, for most of us again i am talking about the gyms in indian setting we have access to barbell we have access to dumbbell and we have access to machines machines flies we we are just uh, taking the example so what exercise are you going to recommend them if if their primary goal is to build a chest i am not talking about triceps or shoulder as a coach what will be your pick or would you so uh you just you just write uh, whatever uh, you want because or you can just turn on the mic and you can use that also okay somebody is writing machine somebody uh, not immediately yes so let's let's dive deep into the exercise of bench press today okay so let me move on to the uh, bench press so it was actually a slide uh, sorry uh, a powerpoint presentation i turned it into no not in terms of risk because we are going to yeah in in this in this uh, lecture series i am going to uh, the i am going to cover the subject of risk or the injury risk but it is not that black and white like some people make it out to be like barbell is not risky uh, there are many risky things you can do how many of you perform barbell bench press for your uh, chest i do but this is one of my favorite exercises i have i have made a lot of uh, i have made a lot of like gains for my chest with this and i am going to describe why i am using this okay so many of you use the flat bench press which is good which is good okay but should you perform this or should you let your clients perform this okay so we are just talking in terms of precision okay i am not talking in terms of like gains only like if you if you progress on the bench press your chest will grow there is no doubt about it but i am talking about precision like if i have to pick like when you are going to the gym when your client is going to the gym he has limited time limited energy okay he has limited time and limited energy should you should you devote your your time or your client's time in uh, uh in a barbell bench press or not that is the question like if you have other alternatives should you use that okay so if you are powerlifting if you are a power lifter then of course you have to do the bench press because it is one of the competitive lift and but majority of the gym goers are not power lifters so our main assumption here is that majority of the gym goers or the general population that is the biggest client base right now for you if you are a competitive athlete if you want to increase your a uh, client base most of them should be from the gen pop side because these are the group which needs most amount of the help so assuming that i am going to give you a few nuances few nuances about the bench press and it applies to uh, other barbell presses as well so take it with some uh, salt okay so for chest growth should you bench press so let, let, let's move on to one particular question i'm i'm going to ask you is that uh, is this true Uh, the first question one and two do you feel more on the chest if you perform a dumbbell press or a split machine press when the loads uh, when the intensity is equated let's say you have done a eight rep set with the barbell press at at relatively heavier weight let's say rir 1 you 
to failure a eight reps to failure eight reps to failure here eight reps to failure here and eight reps to failure at barbell bench press barbell bench press okay so do you feel that when you perform a dumbbell bench press eight rep max dumbbell bench press you feel more on the chest or smith machine press is is this true is this true when you do it in a smith machine or a dumbbell press do you find more on your chest like your pump is more or you are feeling that muscle group a little bit more yes or no you can you can yeah so chinmay finds it easier on the uh good okay gopal do you feel more chest on the uh, bench press right okay okay so so let's see what determines this and do you find this like when you perform lighter weight on the bench press let's say let's say your max max bench your max bench is 100 kilos okay it may be 80 for some 140 for some if you take 70% of that or 60% of that and if you do eight reps do you feel more on the more chest yes range of motion is a thing but we are not going into the range of motion we are going to dive deep into this in the uh, later session but tell me one thing when you perform lighter weight on the bench press or see you are doing a bench press with uh, really heavy load or versus a light load do you feel more chest on the light load or do you do you feel pump on the chest more while you are doing higher reps and higher reps is of, of course you will feel more pump let's say uh, someone please let me know you if if they have ever done a heavy bench press uh, like uh, what what are their max bench press i will take just the one example from your you guys so what what is your max bench press okay ipsha here she has bench 75 kg okay okay you feel okay so my question is see her bench press is 75 kg okay she had done 60 kg let's say for 5 and 40 kg for 5 have you ever find that this kind of weight this kind of weight you find more on the chest mind muscle connection wise have it ever happened to you like when you are doing really light bench press you are feeling it on the chest and when you are loading the movement or you are going near this max your the feeling on the chest is going away have you ever felt like or you are finding more it on triceps and the shoulders yes because of the more systemic load subham we are going to discuss this thing like compound and isolation we are going to uh, discuss okay and ipsa says here is lighter is easier easier to assess like you 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 can you, you can actually target the muscle better with the lighter loads than heavier loads right have you ever asked why and have you ever asked why power lifters use chalk even when doing the bench press why grip is so much of a uh, concern in the in the bench press have you ever asked yourself why even though the even though a normal in the normal gym setting in the normal gym setting you can always bench uh, with without chalk and uh, no no it is not the chalk plays a very crucial role i am going to these all these whole things are connected like lighter weight on the bench press you feel more in the chest and the dumbbell press and the split press and so everything is connected i am just giving you one connection to it okay so so that you can make better decisions about programming and other thing you i am just telling you to think why so let's pause for a while and so we will we'll come back to this slide a little later and let me give go to the other part okay
so if you are a coach then you have to take these nuances a little bit uh with more importance because you have to solve problems and you are going to recommend exercises for others and at the same time you have to you have to experience some of it by yourself to make other others learn learn about the things so let's dive deeper into this and i am going to use a little bit of scientific terms here so let's talk about forces okay and you know i am something of a scientist myself but here i am going to make a correction uh, you know i am not something of a scientist okay i am not a scientist so i am going to make the things a little easier for you so uh, let's talk about forces so force is anything that that is required to cause movement so this is our simple definition i am not going to over complicate the things even though it is not the scientifically really accurate definition but for sake of the simplicity to make ourselves understand i am not a i am not something of a scientist myself and i am not going to uh, complicate the thing uh, more than this so forces okay so for this i am just uh, talking about let's say now we are in the biomechanics category we are vectors resultants and etc etc but i am not going to complicate anything okay so what is vector what is resultant let me tell you okay so let's say there is a uh, the striker is here this is the striker here okay so you are just you you are just uh, putting some force to you are just striking it you are just uh, pushing away this with your fingers and it will go this far right the more effort you will pull here put here the further it will go that means if you put more effort into this then we can say that you have given a higher force and if you just flick it just just give a light push then we can say that the force is the force is a little bit lighter is there any confusion till here so this is this is force i am i am going to talk about the vectors now okay so you got the point right you can use okay clean okay if you if you have any doubt or if you have any difficulty understanding anything you can just type in the you can just type in the comments or the in the chat box i'm i will pause and i will try to make yourself understand a little bit better okay okay now think about you are pushing you you, you are you are just pushing it this way and your friend at the same time you are flicking it from this side and your friend is flicking from this side okay so when whoever will <clears throat> let's say if your friend pushed it hard enough this side then the the striker will go somewhere uh, somewhere near here okay somewhere near here because there is a horizontal horizontal effort this way this way and there is a vertical effort this way so the striker move on to this way so it is equivalent it is equivalent to push the to push this uh, this striker only to a single flick in this way because there are some vertical effort there are some horizontal effort so at the end it will go here so it is called when whenever there are two forces like this this is called the resultant vector okay this is the resultant force so resultant means the result if two person one person is pushing it into this side and one person is pushing into this side in the final uh, finally the striker will go from here to here okay so you, you are you are just flicking here and some so your a little kid came here and is he just flicked it more it will go here if this is more this is more and this is a little bit less then it will move into more onto this side and it will go here so the resultant vector will be there okay so i think most of you know this stuff okay anyone have any doubt till here please let me know in the comment i think no doubt if you have any doubt okay 
okay okay all good all good thank you so we can go further right okay 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 Hello, bro no please uh, repeat the last one last one i missed the last one. okay okay so i i'll take this space to make you understand a little bit better see uh let's say it is the striker right it is the striker okay this is the striker the red striker uh if you if you uh, like from this from at this point like the black dot point you have flicked it okay you have flicked it and you have given a port into this side okay and you have you have just given a lot of effort there and from this side from from this side from side one person he just flicked a really uh, he flicked it little less okay just slight flick and you have put hard effort there then at the end the striker will move here okay here why why because it it got more effort into the into the vertical direction than the horizontal direction so in the horizontal displacement it resulted in this but a vertical displacement is this okay you got it right but when but when a person uh, it, it was flicked more into the, here it was more flicked here but you have given a really less effort onto the vertical side it will move into this direction it is move into this direction and and you got the point now you got the point yes yes okay so the result of these two forces these two efforts is it equal to effort of this it is equal to effort of this when these two these two are these two vectors these are called vectors because it has a direction this is called the resultant that means that means that means it is the composite effect of these two efforts this is the composite effect of these two efforts so it is called the resultant so this is all we need to know and now we are going to discuss uh another another thing called the moment arm so let's talk about this thing moment arm it is the most used and most abused it is the most used and the most abused term in the lifting history and this picture it is everywhere like every moment arm debate every moment arm discussion it will be there so moment arm means see let's say uh, let's talk about a dumbbell press versus dumbbell fly you have to use less weight in the dumbbell fly right you have to use less weight in the dumbbell fly right if you if you if you dumbbell press if you can flat dumbbell press 20 kg then you have to you you cannot use 20 kg for dumbbell flies right for equal amount of reps right why why is it true that you have to use less weight for uh, dumbbell flies than dumbbell presses yes because of moment right if if see if this is a table this is a table and uh, there is a scale like a really long scale that that we use in the engineering is a, a, a there is a scale lying on here it is it is stable it is not it is not falling forward if we put a weight here if we put a weight here if we put a weight here of 2 kg then the scale may still be holding there the the scale will be there only but if we just remove this thing here what will happen this will flip right this will flip right but the force was only this this much okay let me give you one one uh, example uh, in terms of you got it right it it will just flip okay so because there is more moment arm here there is more moment arm here so uh ipsha uh, let me give you one uh, another example uh 
if you are finding it difficult to understand then let me give you one little more example see uh, i have given this in my a video recently about the bench press grip and uh, see there is a can of diet coke here can of diet coke here can of diet coke here and uh, there is a book i am keeping above the can of the diet coke above the can of the diet coke okay if we put if we put a 2 kilo plate here a 2 kilo plate here what will happen it is going to stay it is going to stay but if we remove this 2 kilo to this side to this side the whole book will flip, flip this way the whole system will collapse because it went it went far from the point of rotation okay it went when you open a door why do you think the door handle is here not here because because it will rotate around this axis it will rotate around this axis so if we put a force into this direction or this direction what will happen the door will open or close you can easily when there is more distance between the force and the point of rotation all right let me give you the final boss answer for this context when this is you let's say this is you okay this is your arm this is your arm this is your shoulder to elbow and this is your forearm this is your forearm okay when the weight is here 5 20 kilos weight is here 20 kilos the distance between the shoulder and the 20 kilo weight is only this so it is easier to dumbbell press this way if you have to do a fly if you have to do a fly you have to move your arms this way you have to open up your arms and the weight will be here the weight will be here so the effective distance between this 20 kilo and your shoulder joint it is, it is a little bit more and hence the fly will be more difficult although the weight we are using is the same everyone got everyone got this right everyone till here everyone got this i think everyone is clear till here clinton is clear so if you if you are clear till here then please write yes then i will move forward okay okay so we can move forward okay we can move forward and let's talk about the bench press right now i have given you the so the function of the chest it is the function of the chest exactly in layman terms we are strong when the el elbows are close to not the elbows the weight is close to our body even if you do a even if you do a dumbbell press you can see it is harder on your chest to hold the dumbbell here if you can just flex your elbow and if you close it if you just take it near the chest it is easier to hold it is easier to hold not maybe in terms of movement that is another factor because it is closer to your uh, torso but yes closer to your elbow it is easier to move okay so the function of the chest i am just giving you a really uh, easy easy way of doing this the function of the chest is to rotate your arms like if your arm if your arm is here it helps the arms to move close to your torso the chest fibers uh, produces tension this way and the the humerus humerus move into this way humerus move close to your torso like you are doing a chest fly okay when you are doing a bench press what is happening the humerus is coming towards you the humerus is coming towards you okay that this is the function of the chest if you need more example let me like the move the movement will happen this way the movement will happen this way so this is the function of the chest the chest muscle will contract the chest muscle will contract here and it moves the 
arm from this part to here so this is the base when you are doing a bench press you are doing the same when do you are doing the fly you are doing the same i think you have got uh, the function of the chest here so let me move on to the next part okay so now let's connect the dots what is happening okay let's let's talk about the forces in the bench press we think do you think the force on the bench press it is down like this if you if you if you agree then say yes if you don't agree then say no yes or no why no set up it depends in what factor in which factors does it depend so if you if you can give a explanation in 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 terms of voice or in in terms of text you are welcome you can give an explanation because yes it depends can anyone uh, unmute themselves and give a small explanation about this Uh, sir cause like if uh, a person like me who has long arms yeah. when he brings the bar down i tend to bring the bar uh, down till my not on my chest but lower than my chest if it was uh, directly down force it would have uh, sat on my chest but it doesn't sat on my chest rather it like uh, it sets it's it sits on my belly or okay okay above. okay okay so i i got Not your point like you you move your your shoulder angle like your your lat what you are doing basically let me uh, tell you like gravity will always gravity it is always move into this direction gravity will always push you in this direction it is thus that you are just move you are just creating a motion where your arms doesn't see the reason uh i i i'll give you one video dem uh, like demonstration so what you are doing basically you are moving the arm here because the arm doesn't go like this arm doesn't go like this because uh, arm doesn't want to move in this plane i will i will cover this thing into the later lectures as well the arm actually moves it moves in a arc right all 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 you are saying that the uh, the the bar moves in an arc it starts from here but it ends up in a lower belly or oh, sorry upper belly or just below the chest right that is your point right yes sir okay okay so so that is a fine enough argument that is a fine enough argument okay but uh, see at this point if if we talk about only this static position what is happening actually the bar the gravity is actually pulling you down if you just if if you just leave the bar it will fall directly directly on you okay direct directly straight what do you think like if you if you just drop the bar it will directly fall down or it will move in a arc it will never move in an arc if you just if you are holding a rock here above a building if you just leave it it will directly fall down right gravity works directly straight down so this is why a lot of factors are there like wind will play at uh, the wind will play a role but it will move down right even though your argument let's say your argument is correct that uh, it is there but from this plane it will look only this right if you move if you that look from this angle the bar will see the bar coming down right here right anyone okay so if the weight is coming down here weight is coming down here then what will be the moment arm what will be the moment arm because if the rotation is happening on the shoulder will this be the moment arm 
will this be the moment bar the purple color one yes or no yes or no okay this will be the moment bar right this will be the moment bar and the chest has to work okay so till now we have we have established this fact okay now let's talk about the dumbbell press okay let's say let's say it is it is 60 kg right here it is 60 kg bar it is 60 kg bar and this is 30 30 have you ever noticed one thing please be clear here have you ever noticed when you load 30 and 30 and you can do it for 8 reps but when it is equivalent amount of weight on the barbell bench press you can do it for more reps is this true or not is this true or not or your one repetition max let's say your five your ten, yes true right why why do you think why do you think it is and sometimes you, you can you can say that you will feel more on chest here and less on the chest here and you will feel a lot more tricep on the bench oh uh, sorry a lot more tricep on the flat bench compared to a dumbbell dumbbell press have you ever thought about this like you can bench press 90 kg for 10 but you can dumbbell press 45 you you think that i will dumbbell press 45 but but you cannot in in actual sense you cannot do you know why do you know why there is a particular reason see bench is a compound movement like you cannot always say that this is a compound movement yes uh, gurpreet that is true range of motion is more on the dumbbell we can we can make an argument that the range of motion is actually less in the dumbbell okay why because of the load look at his hand this much range of motion is lost this much range of motion is lost but here the bar can directly touch the chest and stability stability and the stability aspect i am just covering this today stability why the barbell feels more stable okay so let me give you the elephant in the room today the gravity component is this but this is not the resultant force why let me give you an example why you get less more reps on the barbell and why sometimes you feel more chest on the dumbbell see here the gravity is pulling you this way gravity is pushing you this way that is true absolutely true absolutely true but when you are exerting when you are exerting a upward force here what is happening your tricep is opening up right your tricep is opening up right right or wrong when you are doing the bench press the tricep is also opening up the tricep is also working right yes you are getting my point right so if the bar was not fixed and your tricep was going this way what will happen your tricep will just go there right so if the tricep is opening here then your hand is actually push hand is actually giving a force in this direction this direction right but because the bar is fixed bar is fixed and your hand is not slipping your hand is not slipping what will happen there will be some friction right there will be some friction right you feel on the on your grip like if if you if you oil up your hands and you can do a just do a bench press some day with have you ever find that when you bench with a wet hand like you 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 are you are sweating and you are your hands are wet okay and you are doing the bench press do you find it more difficult your hands are kind of like slipping out outwards right right or wrong tell me
right okay so what is happening here when you are when your tricep is doing this and your bar is not okay somebody wants to join let me so when uh, the bar is going this way so there will be another force a reactionary force from the bar to your hand in this way in this way okay so let me uh, take another yellow vector here in this way because your your tricep is uh, your hand is pushing the bar this way so there will be a reactionary force from the bar to your hand in this way in this way okay so the resultant the resultant vector the resultant vector would be this green line would be this green line okay the resultant vector is would be this green line this is why the resultant actually comes really close to your resultant vector really come close to your shoulder joint so there are a lot more happening on the tricep because the moment arm on the tricep is larger here moment arm on the tricep is a little bit larger here from this angle and the moment arm on the shoulder joint is less this is why this is why pecs are stronger muscle less resistance on the chest this is why you feel less on the chest you feel less on the chest more on the tricep more on the tricep and you are being able to move more load and this is why some people they get more for their triceps because triceps are hit a, a little bit better here and sometimes and this is the key takeaway that some people feel less on the chest on the bench press because Yes, I I I I I'll go. I I I'll, I'll I'll answer your question, Shubham. And this is the exact reason. This is the exact reason. Power lifters use power lifters use chalk for their bends. More chalk here, more friction it will be. More big force it will be. And the bigger the force this way, the more. twist uh, the more rotation this kind of uh, this component will get and more close the more less resistance the pack will feel here okay this is why i'll be giving you one example okay this is why this is why when you are doing a bench press sometimes just lighten the grip when uh, do it in the lighter weights lighten the grip okay this is why watch any bodybuilder do their chest exercise the presses they kind of use a open kind of grip like their hands are open have you ever noticed that there is a recent video of uh, sibam uh, ramon everyone was working out you can see how sibam was doing his uh, machine machine chest presses his palms were open his palms were basically open okay your mind will be blown away if you if you think it uh, deep enough this is why when you are doing bench press sometimes what coaches say bro, bro science will say that open up your grip grip like open up your grip and do the uh, barbell bench press like you are doing a push up you will feel more on the chest why because if you open up your grip or loosen the grip here this component will be less and the inclination this vector will have the resultant inclination will be less and there will be more moment arm on here and your chest will be trained a little bit more this is why power lifters use chalk here if you if you get more chalk here more friction will be created and more bigger of a resultant this way and it the resultant will be coming here and resistance on the chest will be little bit less and hence you can lift more weight and at heavier weights you will feel more on your tricep why because friction depends on friction depends on mass mass or oh, sorry the normal force and normal force depends on the mass of the barbell okay the more weight here will be the more friction will be here the more 
reactionary force you are going to get and more triceps you are going to feel when you are doing heavier bench presses this is why power lifters has developed bigger arms from bench presses only but when you are using 70% load 65% load this doesn't take place that much now let's compare the dumbbell bench press and the barbell bench press okay let's compare the dumbbell bench press and the barbell bench press the resultant of a 60 a 30 kg down here okay down here there is a huge movement arm on the chest this is the movement arm on the chest here what is happening the resultant in this way the resultant is this way so less movement arm on the chest this is why dumbbell bench press yes close grip bench press close grip bench press it, it is it is uh, like at the stress position like we are going to close grip but i am not covering it now close grip it will be similar it will be similar because the reactionary force uh, the uh, because see in the close grip bench press the vector will be here one will be here so it will be more close to your chest and more tricep will work because now there is a bigger moment arm on the tricep bigger moment arm on the tricep a relatively smaller moment arm on the chest and hence it is a better tricep exercise close grip bench press see if you if the arm see let me prove this way okay why close grip bench press is a better tricep exercise let me just use basic physics and I'll prove it to you. See, when Arnold is doing this way, net resultant is this. So on the tricep, this much resistance is happening. This much only. Okay. But when you are doing close grip, but when you are using close grip, his grip will be somewhere like in this here. Okay. Resultant is this way. Less moment arm on the chest but a bigger moment arm on the tricep and it, it becomes more of a tricep exercise. You got it difference? So this is why close grip bench press, it is, it, it is a good tricep exercise and not a really better uh, choice for the chest. But we can make argument about close grip dumbbell bench press that I am going to cover in the next lectures. What is the utility of doing a dumbbell press wider and what is the utility of doing the dumbbell press a little bit closer fiber alag -alag fiber bay it will hit different fibers okay because the chest is kind of like it mimics the functioning of lats it just it is one of the antagonist muscle group at least some fiber directions are antagonist to the chest so let's move on to the key takeaways from this discussion okay some key takeaways from this discussion is let me uh, okay i think key takeaway is so so what are the programming takeaways from this this kind of discussion number one if you are a coach or if you want to just speed run your uh, chess progress then for precision for precision sake <clears throat> i have done myself i have done only barbell bench press for 80 percent of my training journey and i have chest is my best body part because i have never had bigger triceps so the friction component was less and the chest got stimulus but for precision sake like if i have to choose one exercise that precisely targets my chest i will be using dumbbell press over barbell press for back group number one and there are individual considerations like myself like let's say there is a person there is a person whom you are training he has only access to a only access to a barbell only only flat bench setup only what will you tell here what, what will you tell him you will tell him that use a little light weight that let's say 60 percent of your one rep max use 
a relatively less tighter grip use a secure grip but don't clench the bar so hard just use a secure grip secure enough grip and do the movement then he will then you can make his uh, like you are making the same exercise more uh, like more suited for that per person's needs which is pec growth and grip matters grip matters if you are if you are training one power lifter he is concerned about more chest growth a uh, sorry more bigger number tell him to use chop if you have to use a barbell use kind of like a loose grip but a secure grip so that the bar doesn't fall off okay so these are the programming takeaways okay and this is the exact reason you will see some people they bench presses a lot but their chest is chest is not that big compared to someone who bench only 60 kilos but his chest is relatively bigger so from a perspective of a coach your whole aim is to learn these things a little bit better so that you can make better decisions for your clients and if you train by yourself if you self coach yourself you have to learn these things and i think for some it may be it may be a little bit uh, it may be a little bit tricky to get it if you if you are not coming from a uh, science background but let me tell you i am a humanities graduate whatever the education in fitness i have got it it was after my graduation okay so i have read uh, some of basic physics some of the basic math some of the basic biology and if you just know the best basics and if you hammer it again and again and again your knowledge will just skyrocket okay so let me uh, let me uh, tell you this this is just the tip of the iceberg because a lot to know even i have to know a lot but the thing is you have to you have to mix practice versus theoretical knowledge in our industry the problem is people are only from the practical side or people are only from the theoretical knowledge side so there is a mismatch between these two group of people and there is a on, always there you see on the instagram one one party is inviting the other party to debate just debate me debate me debate me this is not the how you this is not how the things are moving uh, towards right knowledge to get the right amount of knowledge you have to have the practical experience in the gym you have to have the practical experience of training people and you have to have the knowledge okay so i'll i use this <clears throat> so why to think like this because you will get better at programming exercise for yourself and your clients and you will get better results let me assure you when i left uh, i left uh, some of my bias of the barbell supremacy and i dive I, i just grew a mindset of a beginner like i have to know this much about this this type this type of stuff my physique actually got better my strength actually got better my joints feels better now although i am working a lot i am in a, a lot of work stress right now but my recovery is good so this is why to make intelligent decisions like which exercise to select for whom you can learn a lot of more things like this and my whole aim my whole aim with this uh, lecture series is to make you guys like wh whoever will join uh, better at decision making like this and this is just one introductory lecture i will cover almost all the exercises all the exercises that can be done like i will be demonstrating dumbbell exercises barbell exercises landmine exercises and other machine exercises and i will make it a whole i will make it a whole package and the value i am providing this for the amount i am charging it is a lot more you don't have to go for another tutorial in the youtube you i i'll be getting back to you all and if you just uh, start uh if you just come here and start uh, start attending the lectures from the next sunday onwards you are getting one tutorial video all the uh, stuff i make for my clients you are going to get 
them for free. Like every every week, I make at least ten tutorial videos for my clients. Whoever is under uh, training under me, they will know. I think one or two persons are here, so you can join my coaching or you can join uh, the course as well. I, I won't say this is a course because it is not really comprehensive, but uh, the basic basics with some practical applications of those basics. So today I'm ending my lecture here. Uh, if you have anything to say, anything to ask, you can use the microphones and the comment section to know. And I'll be uploading this lecture and I'll be making it free for all. So I hope uh, I have given you some value. And if you are uh, interested, you can join. Thank you, everyone. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Sir, can I ask you to stabilize the exercise? Uh, for, 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 for which? Uh, legs. Yes, you have to double press. Yes. Uh, legs, you can use leg press. You can use hack squats. Uh, you are. Hack squats are available. So, you can use alternate clothes. Like in normal barbell squats. Uh, if you are talking about stability and the person is a beginner, you can use landmine squats as well because the bar part is kind of like fixed. Like you are just fixing the bar and you are making it a little bit more stable for someone. But uh, loading will be an issue. Loading will be an issue. Uh, but uh, if you have the access to leg press, you can use that. If you have the access to leg extension, you can use that. And most, most importantly, barbell squat itself, it is a really, really stable exercise. You, you have to just teach the person and fit the exercise to their purpose. And I will, I will teach, I will teach this thing also. Like barbell squat, you can use it in terms of uh, many. There are many practical uh, applications of barbell squats. You can tweak uh, little things here and there, and you can get different exercises, uh, different stimulus from the same exercise. Yes, Smith machine exercise, Smith machine squats are also really, really good. And uh, make sure to do the uh, like leg positioning matters, uh, like uh, stance matters. So everything uh, you are going to get. It. So anything you more, uh, anything more you want to ask, or if you uh, if you if you want to uh, join the whole series, then please uh, DM me, or you can just. Uh, raise your hand in the group i'll be uh, i'll be getting you on board and um, if you join it will be quite uh, uh, much help for me also so thank you everyone uh, i'll be here uh, for another 5 minutes and you can so ask questions course, so uh, you can just uh, i'll be uh, i'll be there in the group and I'll just take a high. I'll just give you a high, and you can just okay. you can just. Delete uh, I'll give you my number uh, on the group, and you can just directly call me. Oh, uh, sorry, the direct text me. I'll I'll get you on board. Okay. So any anything uh, anyone other than Subham, if you have any questions, you can just. Uh, yeah. Yeah. From last discussion uh, from the bench of this yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, is there anything related to liver and plethrum also? I think? Yes. Yes, yes. All, all the things are uh, related to that yeah. only today discussion. I just I just didn't use those words because uh, I, if you if you see the recorded lecture, you can uh, you can see uh, what I was talking about. So I will I will send you the recorded lecture in the group. I will be sending the link and you will be able to rewatch this uh, lecture again and you, if you have any questions you can always ask me i'll be there for you to help so okay, okay so from the next sunday we are uh, holding our lectures uh, we, we, we will be doing it around 2 3 pm or any preferred uh, time slot uh, based on the persons who enroll so the, actually it it should be a big thanks to divyas because if if he didn't uh, uh, he didn't uh, just ask me for this. I couldn't. Uh, I wouldn't have made this a series. But uh, thank you, Dibyans, 
if you have anything to ask you can ask me or otherwise we can end the session here and thank you for joining and thank you for showing faith in me this means a lot and uh, we are ending the lecture here or if you have anything uh, any any doubt any anything to ask you can just directly text me or directly ask me in the group okay so thank you everyone